Hello everybody, this is Wiggle Burrito, and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be ranking all the 13 maps in Galactic Assault of Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm not going to take too much time in the intro, but I'm just going to say there are some parameters that I'm ranking the maps on. So it's not just, this is 13, this is 12, this is 11. It's actually going to be like reasons why they're in the spot. Because this is one of the most important topics, and we're talking about this game. Other than probably ranking the heroes, which would probably be the most important. But with that out of the way, let's get into the parameters. So, what I'm judging it on is the position and the map order. The overall enjoyment, like did, when you're done playing it, did you actually have fun? How good it is for kill streaks? Because I mean, I am a kill streak channel. And then the last one is scenery, like how just how good does it look? Nothing about the gameplay, just about how how good does the map look? Now there is one more thing that isn't big enough to be on the four parameters list, but it is a slight thing that kind of makes a difference. But it's really only for one class, so that's why I didn't add it to the list. It's, do you get a good squad heal when you're an officer? Because, I mean, I am a level 800 officer, so I'll like the map a little bit better if I do get a free, like, 800 battle points for just pressing LVRB. But with that all out of the way, it's time to get into the video. So coming in at number 13, and not much of a surprise, is Geonosis. So this map probably isn't much of a surprise, because, I mean, I bet if you made a list, it wouldn't maybe not be last, but it would definitely be close to last. This map is, not only is it confusing, like, I've been playing the game for, like, over two years, and I still don't think I'm sure what the clones are trying to accomplish. But that's not a big reason why it's in last place. The, really, the most reason is that it's just so hard to play as a hero on it. I mean, I've tried to be, like, five different heroes on Dark Side to maybe, like, oh, maybe it's good for this guy. No, it's, I've tried to be Darth Maul, Bosk, Kylo Ren, Darth Vader, anyone. But I just cannot seem to do well with any dark side hero, and a few light side heroes like Lando, Luke, and Yoda, but that's about it. Adding to the fact, it's just boring to play. Like, I feel like I've already played a, a long game before I've even gotten to the main open part. Like, when the clones are just trying to override this, like the two control stations, it feels like I've already played for such a long time. But really, the only good thing about this map is the scenery. It's probably one of the best, if not the best, looking maps. I mean, this map is so cool, probably because it's like the newest map, and they and they took the most time on it, but it is so cool just beyond the battlefield, like all the little battles about like AI, like clones and droids just fighting, all like the abandoned droid transport ships, it is just so fun to look at, but not so much to play. And taking the number 12 spot in the list is Hoth. And so I, I had to like go out of my way to get gameplay for this map, because I never play this map. And it's a little better on the dark side because there's not ATSTs following you around and taking all of your health away as a hero. And ATATs spamming you with orbital strikes, but it's still pretty boring when you're a bad side hero too. Now it is a bit like Geonosis, nothing by the looks of it obviously, but by also the scenery. It's one of the best looking maps too. And really none of the maps look bad in this game, it's just some maps look way better than others. And this one is right into that category. I mean, the giant Star Destroyers above the battlefield are so cool. Not to mention Hoth takes just kind of a long time. But really the main thing why I just don't like it is it's hard to get killstreaks on. I mean, if you're watching this in the future, I might have a video on Hoth. But as of now, I don't have any killstreaks on Hoth and it'll probably stay that way. I mean, just watch the rest of this clip. There's literally a Count Dooku and like half of his team just shooting at me. I don't even know where my team is. Coming in at the number 11 spot is Crate, and I actually used to love this map, just really just because of how it looked, and really just because I just saw The Last Jedi. But now that I've gotten into killstreaks, it just really has gone down for me. So the first thing right off the bat is it is so hard to get a hero on this map if you don't play on PC, or if you just have average aim on console. Because I, I don't play as a sniper, my specialist is like level 30. And that's really the only way you can get a hero on this map. And I don't even have the NT-242, so it's just impossible to even kill people. So I just don't like this map very much just because of how hard it is to get a hero. And really, if you don't like sniping, you probably just be an ATST and get one, but that's super cheap, and it's just really not that fun. 
But like the past two maps I've said, this is one of the best in scenery. It look it is so well done. It's really fun to look at, but just like Hoth, it's not very fun to play. But Hoth, it's really easy to get a hero because you just can farm ion disruptors. But you can when you're good side on this, but it's a little harder. And just staying alive as the hero is really the problem. And if you've noticed, the gameplay you're watching right now is like a 40 kill streak with Bosk that I posted a while back, and that's probably the only crate video I'm gonna do. And it's not even a really good kill streak, but. That's all I really could do on this map, so it's just hard for kill streaks and also just hard to get a hero in the first place. At the number 10 spot is Takodana. And just the problem for this map for me is just the length of the round. It seems like every time I play this map, which is pretty rare, it just the rounds are so short and it's just impossible to get a kill streak. Also, one thing that brings it down is the scenery. It's just it's pretty boring to look at. It's just kind of trees and little broken down rock structures it's not very interesting to look at already like most of the maps have trees and like forests in them so this just really isn't any different and it feels like half the time i play this map it's just the resistance spawn camping the first order and then it's just a first objective game i don't know if that's for everyone else but just for me it seems like that happens all the time and i think the most thing that brings it down is the placement in the map order i mean You've seen where I placed Hoth, and guess what's right after Hoth? Yeah, this map, and guess what's after this map? Crate. So the map order is like almost the worst it could be, so this map is kind of lucky to be this high on the list. At the number 9 spot is Tatooine, and this is one of the few controversial ones, because I know people that love this map, but I just don't find this map very interesting. And one of the main things is all the little chairs and like tables and things that you get stuck on. This is definitely doesn't only happen to me. I mean, a lot of times I just lose like half of my health as a hero. Just getting caught on a little chair and I can't move. That's not really the only thing. The round lengths are sometimes depressing how short they can be. It's just impossible for a kill streak. The gameplay you're watching now is like a 47 mall streak. That, I mean, it's I'm, I respect anyone who can get like a 50 plus streak on this map. If you don't have it like assisted with like the overtimes or anything. But this map is a nice looking map, like all the little sand houses and stuff, it's really cool, just the chairs and tables just are really annoying, and I know that's not just for me. And the 8th best map in Battlefront 2 is Death Star 2. And just the first thing that comes to mind is the scenery, it's not like they did a bad job or anything, it's just what the Death Star looks like. It's just not very fun to look at anyways, it's just kind of grey and lights and things. But although that's the first thing that comes to mind, the most annoying thing about this map is the round length, similar to Tatooine and Takodana. Sometimes the rounds can be super short on this map, so just not enough for kill streaks. But a couple things that bring this map up a little bit, make it a little better on the list, is just there's no vehicles, that's obvious, because if you don't might not know me, I just absolutely hate vehicles. I never be them. It's just super cheap, but I'm not gonna get into that. Another good thing I like about this map is the order on the map rotation it is. It's before Jakku, which hasn't been said yet, but it's going to be said pretty soon. And it's after Kashyyyk, which isn't going to be said for a long time. I really like Kashyyyk. So overall, this map lacks in scenery and length of the rounds, but it makes up for it slightly in the where it is in the map rotation and that there's no vehicles. And as I said before, it won't be long until we see Jakku, so at the number 7 spot is Jakku. Now starting with the good stuff, it's the nice length of the round, I mean it's a nice 4 objective map. Just the thing that brings it down is just the design of the map, like where the objectives are. More specifically, let's start with the good side. So really when I play this map, the only guy I be is Lando, and the only way I can do well is just sitting at the top of the hill on the second objective and just spamming sharp shot. Then with the bad side, the only way I can do well is just with Bosk sitting in the back on the opposite side of Lando, just picking off the resistant snipers sitting in the back of the map. The scenery is up there and one of the best ones, all the like junk and just scrap metal and sand is really cool, but just the round length is also the pretty much the only other plus. Just the only reason this map is as where it is, is just because of what map is after it, which is indoor, and I'll get into indoor later. But if this map wasn't after indoor, it would probably be a lot lower. So coming in at the number 6 spot is Starkiller Base. 
So pretty much all the maps I say, including this one and after it, are maps I genuinely enjoy. Like, I, I love playing these maps from Starkiller Base and on. So let's start with the good stuff. The scenery is as good as it can be. I mean, the snow is pretty cool. It just looks like Starkiller Base. It has some really nice objectives where there's just enemies that clump up at the top of the stairs. So guys like BB-8 and Anakin can really get some nice kill streaks. It's a little harder to play as a dark side hero on this map, but it's still completely doable. So another reason why this map is so good on the list is because of the position and the map rotation it is. I mean, as long as you can get past Tatooine, which isn't that hard to get past, it has a nice Yavin 4 after it, which is really nice. It's up there on one of my favorite maps, and Naboo is after Yavin 4, so it puts you in a nice little spot in the rotation. It's also got nice squad heals as an officer for both sides, so that's just a little plus. This map is just an overall good map. I mean, it kind of lacks in scenery, but it's as good as it can be. And the length of the rounds and nice multi-kills you can get really make it just an overall great map. And bringing us into our top 5 is Yavin 4. So this map probably would have been like 1st or 2nd or maybe 3rd for me like a couple months ago. But I've just been playing it so much just to get to Naboo after it. It's kind of lost a little place, but it's still an overall great map. But I will say, like any other map, it's just favored towards the dark side a little more. Mainly just because ATSTs, Darth Vader, and Kylo Ren. But it's just so much easier to be Darth Vader on this map. Or just any dark side hero. Just because you don't have ATSTs and just everything out to get you. I mean, I think about five times I've been Luke Skywalker and just either been stepped on by an ATSC and just, just died instantly, or just took down, like, all of my health and then I just can't do anything. This map is a little over-average scenery. It is just kind of another forest map like Takodana, but just the Millennium Falcon's cool on the third objective, and just the giant temples with all the moss and stuff on them, those are really cool. And this map is the best, if not one of the best, for kill streaks. I mean, it's four objectives, and they're pretty long objectives too. And if you can get a right hero in the right lobby that isn't too sweaty, you'll have a wonderful time getting a kill streak on this map. And coming in at the number four spot is Kashyyyk. And yeah, this might be a surprise for some people, because I know a lot of people that do not like this map at all. But since I started getting into kill streaks, it's actually a really fun map. As long as you can just stay away from the MTT, if you're a good side, it can be really fun. I've gotten some nice Obi-Wan and Yoda streaks on this map, but where it really is fun is when you're dark side. I mean, there's really not a bad choice on this map, like Boba Fett, Darth Vader, Grievous, Kylo, Maul. There's really not a bad choice for a dark side hero. And not to mention, both teams get a nice squad heal at the start when you're an officer. And it's a nice long map too for killstreaks. I really don't know what people find this map so bad for. The scenery is above average and it's in a pretty decent spot in the map order. It's just after Geonosis, which if you can hopefully skip Geonosis and just go directly to Kashyyyk when you're looking for a Galactic Assault game, you'll have a pretty fun time playing this map. Starting in the top three is Endor at number three. And this is probably the last controversial one. For being this high up on the list but i just like indoor a lot some people don't like it but it's just really the only annoying thing is just the atsts and ATATs. but isn't that for every empire map and this is another map where it's really hard to make a bad choice with a hero i mean ray obi-wan luke anakin yoda bb8 there's a lot of good choices there's but surprisingly, it's actually harder for a dark side hero just because there is an ATAT -AT spamming you with orbital strikes. But it's nice for the dark side to get that for a change. And I've probably got about three or four of my kill streak videos on this map, and it's just I always love seeing Indoor when it pops up. And not to mention Camino is after it, which you'll see where I put Camino in a little later. And really the map's scenery is just amazing. All the like plants and trees it just Looks like it took a lot of time to make, and it's just really fun to play on. And this might be surprising for some people, but Nebu actually isn't number one. I mean, I love this map. Like, when it pops up in like, Galactic Assault, I am excited to play this map. It's just because it's an MTT map, so you do occasionally get hit for, like, 200 health by an MTT just when you're just running around. It is mildly annoying. But really, there are very few things wrong about this map. I mean, it has a great length, the scenery is awesome, it's in a 
decent spot in the rotation. I mean, Hoth is after it, and I've personally gotten into a habit of just backing out right when I'm done with Naboo. But it does round off a nice little streak of good maps, starting with Starkiller, then Yavin 4, then this map. But I will say about, like, a third of my killstreak videos are on this map, but, I mean, I think that applies to every killstreak YouTuber. And this map is just overall enjoyable. Like, I'm never done with playing Naboo and just being like, why did I just play that map? This map is always fun. And finishing off the video as the number one best map in Galactic Assault of Star Wars Battlefront 2 is the cloning facility Kamino. And I'm just going to list all of the good things that I love about this map. Both teams get a really nice squad heal at the start of the game. It's almost good for every single kind of hero, lightsaber, or blaster. There's really no vehicles unless you count the LAATs just in the second objective. It's a four objective map and those are pretty long objectives too so it's really nice for kill streaks. And it's spot in the map order isn't that bad either. I mean it's right after Indoor which is the third best map and it's right before Tatooine so if you want to play Tatooine and then play Starkiller Yavin in the Naboo which is what I usually do it's just the most perfect spot in the map rotation. And then to round it off, the scenery is awesome, and most, more specifically the second objective with the huge ocean and the storm in the sky and it raining is one of the coolest scenes in Battlefront 2. I honestly had to struggle to think of a bad thing about this map, and really the only thing I could think of is pretty weak. It's just sometimes you fall off as a hero in the second objective into the ocean if you just take a jump too high or just accidentally do a dash, but that's really just a minor thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video of me ranking all 13 maps in Galactic Assault of Battlefront 2. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.